Hey there, Todd with Tribble Painting. Today we're starting a door refinishing project. I wanted to talk through with you some of the common tools that'll be helpful to have on hand if you're working on a, a project where you're uh, staining a door. Um, we're gonna refinish this door. We're just gonna take the old stain product off by sanding, and then we're gonna apply a new product today. So I have my semi-transparent stain that we'll be using later, and I just wanted to talk about you know, what you might need. I think you'll need some type of scraper. We use a, what's called a five-in-one or a painter's tool. Um, you could use a common screwdriver or a putty knife if you don't have one of these. Um, we'll use this to open the can. And because we're using the semi-transparent stain, we don't want to shake the product. Uh, to mix it, we, we want to stir it. Because if you shake it, it's going to get a lot of air bubbles into the, into the stain. So lots of times if this stain has been sitting on the shelf for a while and you just purchased it, uh, the pigment could have settled into the bottom. So we use a stir stick and we stir and pull up as we're stirring to make sure that that uh, pigment that might have settled is, is evenly distributed. And that we have a nice even coat, even finish when you start to apply it to your, to your door. This is an oil-based product we're using today, so we're going to use a China bristle brush. Uh, this is a disposable brush. We're not going to clean this when we're done because we'd have to use mineral spirits or paint thinner. If we use those, then we're going to have to dispose of that product properly. And so uh, instead of going through that, we're just going to use a, a brush today since we just have one door and we'll let it dry and then uh, throw that away once we're done. So. Remember, uh, China bristle brush if you're using a oil-based product, and then some type of paint scraper, screwdriver uh, for opening the can. It'll be handy for a lot of things as you go. So stay tuned, watch as our door evolves here today. This time around, they asked us to sand all that old product off, which we did using the Festool R90 sander, both the round and the triangle head. We started with uh, an 80 grit sandpaper, and that chewed through that old finish pretty well. And then we went back over that with a 180 grit, uh, just to make sure it was smooth and get rid of all that fuzziness that was created by that 80 grit. So we're midway through the project. You can see the door is down to bare wood. Normally, we probably would have laid this door off out on sawhorses, um, but being late in the fall and not being able to keep the door off overnight because the temperatures, we we're going to just do it in place. And so we're about to go back over it with a new product. And uh, the new product we're going to use is the Sickens Door and Window Satin. And this will be perfect for this uh, setting. Probably make that door look really beautiful once it's done. So. Uh, we're about to get started. We'll show you what it looks like when we're finished up here. So we talked about your stain and paint brushes. And now before we get started, last thing we need to do is take the weather stripping out. So the weather stripping is this piece here. It uh, is the barrier between the door frame and the door. And when you shut the door, the door actually touches the weather stripping. So the weather stripping looks like this. and. It, it inserts, this is a piece that goes across the top of the door I've already removed. So it slides into a notch that's cut into the door frame. And so once the door is stained or painted and you shut it, the door will actually, actually be touching this piece of weather stripping. So we always remove that so when we shut the door and it's freshly painted or stained, it won't stick. And then when you open the door the next time, pull your new paint or stain off. And so many times when a home is new, this may be stapled in, and that's okay. It's easy to remove those staples. We use our five-in-one, and then you just, just gently pull this, work your weather stripping out. And I'll show you once I get it up here to eye level. Um, once you get the corner started, it's very easy to remove. And it really just pulls out. You just go all the way up. 
and that strip comes right out. So we'll leave that out until the door is fully cured, which is generally a few days after uh, application. Then we just reinsert it again. We use our five-in-one tool. If you don't have one of these, paint scraper, even a standard uh, screwdriver would work well. And you just use the, uh, the blade, whatever you're using, to push the weather stripping back in when you're all done. So remember, remove your weather stripping, Leave it out till the door is fully dried. Uh, replace it afterwards. You'll be all set. Okay, so we have the first coat on. Um, door's looking beautiful. You probably saw me pulling the uh, weather stripping off in the time-lapse video. If you didn't, so it's important, uh, weather stripping is what keeps the cold air bugs from getting in uh, between the door and the door frame. So it's usually a rubber or plastic and rubber combination runs uh, both sides of the door and across the top. Sometimes it's stapled in, not always. Uh, but we always pull this when we do a door because the door sits against that weather stripping. So overnight, if this door that is freshly painted or stained, as it shuts, come in contact with that weather stripping um, before the door is completely dry, then when you open it next, it'll pull the stain or paint off. So I went ahead and removed that. I'll leave it out until we get the second coat on, which we'll do tomorrow. Need 24 hours of dry time before we apply the second coat. So we'll do that, let it dry again 24 hours, and if it feels uh, dry enough and isn't tacky, we'll reinstall those um, weather stripping as the last step. So hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit like uh, on your way out. It, uh, that's very important to us in helping other people find um, helpful tips and tricks uh, for their painting projects. Thanks again.